Talking a little Detroit Lions football now with the voice of the Detroit Lions and, of course, Fox 2 Sports Director. If you're watching on Fox2Detroit.com or the Fox 2 app, we certainly appreciate it. Dan Miller, how are you, my friend? What's going on, guys? How you doing? Doing great today, and I'll tell you why. I uh, I was going back and doing a little research this morning on the Detroit Lions, okay? And uh, the details are <laughs> <laughs> You know, uh, I, I just... This loss against Carolina, I, I just never. I, I wanted them to go nine and one to close out the year. I just never expected a nine and one finish. Dan, do you know how many times the Detroit Lions won nine games in a ten game stretch in the history of the franchise? I don't. One time. It was in 1934 uh, when they were their first year in the NFL when they were started out 10 and 0. What they were trying to do was nearly impossible. I give them them a mulligan for this game. Am I am I uh, crazy to do so? Well, I mean, it doesn't mean you're not angry about it or that you're not disappointed because I can tell you in talking to Dan Campbell yesterday, he was still pretty hacked off. And I think it was just the way they lost. They just, to get blown off the ball like that defensively, give up 320 yards rushing, 570 yards to the offense that your defense gave up. Um, Look, I I was talking with TJ last week, and, you know, he made the point, and I've heard him make it on the radio too. It's so hard to go 9-1 and in this league, which is your point. And it really is. And I don't want people to think that that's making an excuse for what happened, but the reality of it is you're going to have a clunker in there somewhere. I think what everybody hoped was that the Jets game was kind of their clunker and they survived it because they didn't play that well. But look, man, it's the problem isn't as much the nine and one as it is the one and six. It's the start and the hole that you dug for yourself that put you in a position to have to do something like nine and one. So look, I, I, I don't think you necessarily say, all right, it's all right, it's understandable because you don't want them to play like that. But the fact is over 10 games in the NFL, man, more often than not, you're gonna have one of those nasty games that just doesn't go your way. I mean, how many times have teams won nine out of 10 this year? Minnesota and Philadelphia, and that's like it, right? Yeah, and I'm not even sure, to be honest with you, if, if Minnesota's even won 9 of 10. Maybe if you slide the schedule one way or the other, I mean, probably they have, but they've got three losses. Uh, Philadelphia certainly has. Uh, uh, but um, it's just a hard thing to do. Dan, Dan Rolofsky pointed out today on Twitter, I don't know if you saw the tweet, that the Lions just weren't prepared to play that game. And uh, 320 yards rushing, uh, is that a schematic thing? I feel like I feel like the coaches for the Carolina Panthers saw something in the Lions defense. I mean, have seven or so plays of over thirty yards. Yeah. Is is that scheme? I, look, it's Dan Campbell says not being ready. Dan Orlovsky knows what he's looking at as well. I don't know, man. We throw these phases, these phrases around not being ready. What's that mean? What what are you not ready for? I mean, I think they went out there to play. I they just got beat. Now, whether or not it, it is schematic and, and Carolina saw something, I mean, this team had given up 72 yards on 39 carries in the previous two games. So to give up 320, I don't know, man. You can pretty much say whatever you want. It's probably going to be right because that just wasn't good and it was nowhere near what they're capable of. But I think sometimes there's there's phrases that we throw out and I don't really know what they mean i guess you could say they weren't ready because they didn't come out ready to go so i don't know does that mean that you slept through it that you didn't take them seriously i i don't think that's the case but i think there's bad days at the office in days where the other guy just maybe comes out a little more fire than you had they were coming off a brutal loss their coach had said they were going to get back to basics they were going to get physical in practice and maybe that's what showed up in the game and I just left Dan Campbell recording something with him, and he's saying that has to be us this week. We have to be the team that's hacked off this week because we just got our tails kicked, so we got to come out and play like that. 
Yeah, that's something that we've been talking about on the show is that they can't double down this week on it. Then we can start to have a whole different conversation about a whole different set of concerns. Uh, one thing that I, I'd like to ask you, Dan, is you're at these games, and when I'm live at a game, I, I kind of like to watch the sideline, watch the interaction of the players and the coaches and see the energy there. Did you notice anything different in this past game against Carolina on the sidelines? Like the team just wasn't into it. They, they weren't like patting each other on the back. Uh, was there something that we didn't see on the television broadcast that maybe you picked up on while you were there? I didn't, but to be honest with you, I'm not, I don't watch the sidelines a whole lot unless there's something that pops on the TV out of the corner of my eye that I got to see an interaction between somebody or something. I mean, we're pretty locked in on what happens on the field. Um, I, I, I really didn't notice anything out of the ordinary other than the fact that the other team was, was <laughs> them for 60 minutes. Um, so, you know, I don't know, man. I, I feel like we can dissect this. We can talk about what happened. Uh, they got beat on the field. And whether that's preparation or in-game adjustments, whatever it is, I don't know. But the, the fact is they haven't stayed down long this year. And that's who they have to be this week. They really haven't let one loss beat them twice. Other than the New England game, they've been in pretty much every game up until this one. And that's the resiliency they have to show this week. If you don't have that, well, then you're you're going to be, you know, out of luck when it comes to, to making the playoffs in all likelihood because you're probably not going to get that much help. You just got to be ready to play a divisional opponent who, let's face it, Bears want to ruin their season. The Bears want to come in here. They, they're on a losing streak. They've won three games all year. They've played hard, though, and they want to come in here and end the Lions' season. So you better be – whatever Carolina brought, I guarantee you Chicago's going to bring that because you got a bunch of young guys – that are playing for jobs. They want to take another divisional opponent and make them just as miserable as they are, and pretty much ending the Lions' season would do that. Hey, Dan, uh, the last uh, two times the Lions lost a football game, they went on three-game win streaks. Um, so, like you said, one game hasn't beat them twice. I anticipate them to play their best football game this Sunday against Chicago. Is that uh, is that something that um, Dan Campbell, obviously you just got done talking to him. Did, does he anticipate that? Does he feel like this is, hey, enough of that, we'll, we'll, we'll keep going here? Well, I, I, I got to first emphasize what I said before. He was not happy after that game, nor should he have been. But for, I talked to him yesterday and I talked to him today. And yesterday, 48 hours after the game, you could still see the steam coming out of his ears. I mean, he was just... I don't think he knew what hit him. I don't think he expected that. Uh, I think the tape told the story of his guys just getting beat all day long. And coaches don't like to see that. So, uh, Ryan, based on what we've seen this year, I anticipate this team will come out and play well against the Bears on Sunday. I, I just, they've, they've bounced back from tough losses. They've been able to back up wins with other wins. They haven't really you know come out other than the new england game and the carolina game and thrown a clunker out there so based on what we've seen this year i have no reason to expect anything other than at home which has been phenomenal all year the ford field fans have been unbelievable um that they're gonna get back to business and, and play like there's a lot at stake which is probably at its core the, the most disappointing thing was this past weekend with so much at stake, they didn't play the way you would think that situation would, would call you to rise to the occasion. But let me say this. The one thing that, that does hack me off that I hear people say is as soon as something's on the line, they're the Lions or they're right. the SOL, which I don't even go for. It's lazy. It's, it's, it's just most people would say that are lazy. But I, I think that don't tell me there was nothing on the line against Minnesota. Don't tell me there was nothing on the line against the Jets. Now, I understand that things go up, but people make it sound like this was the first important game they played all year and they just fell apart. That's not true. You had to beat a first place team. You had to beat a Jets team that was fighting for a playoff spot. I mean, you can go back. They, they, since they were one in six, every game has pretty much been do or die for them just to get back to this point. No doubt. Hey, Dan, um, I, I want to hit two other things with you if I could. First and foremost, um, the Detroit Pistons. That was as epic a collapse last night as I think we've seen. What was the stat stick you said? Two, two and 12,000? 12, uh, yeah. Something crazy like a that. 14 with three minutes to go. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yep. Um, if 
I feel like Dwayne Casey is such a nice man, uh, is such a gentleman. Does does this team need a Dan Campbell type kick you in the tail kind of kind of guy? I mean. After that game, I don't know. Maybe I wanted somebody throwing, uh, throwing <laughs> the stat sheet the or throwing chairs around yeah. or something. It was just, I don't know. What do, what do you make of the Detroit Pistons where they're at right now in their in their growth? I, I don't know. I mean, it's it's obviously hard when your best player isn't playing. Uh, the guy that we all jumped up and down about for them to be able to draft um, doesn't excuse blowing a fourteen point lead with you know three and a half minutes to go, but it, it just. They're not very good, and, and they're really young. And, you know, you watched at certain points in that game last night, and they looked young. They looked like at certain points they didn't know what to do when it was critical. And, you know, you needed to stop a run. Just a basket at any point would have stopped a run by the Clippers. And there really wasn't anybody, except Bogdanovich who tried, but there really wasn't anybody to take control and to just say, hey, everybody calm down, give me the ball, give me an ISO, we're going to go ahead and score here, and we're going to put an end to this run. So I don't know, man. It's it, it's just hard. Where Casey is concerned, you're right. He's a gentleman. He's a good guy. But I, I do think there will come a point where you just wonder if they need to hear a different voice. And that, that may not be a reflection on him as much as it's a reflection of the situation that they're in. And ultimately, maybe just they need to hear something different. I don't know how many people can do better with this. With the, with the team that they have right now, you know, two young guys leading the way from this past draft class who are going to be really good players, but also you can tell at times when Dern's not on the court at the end of the game that they don't trust him yet. Um, I, I don't know, man. It's just, to me, it's, it, it's tough. It's, as you said, Casey is a guy that's easy to root for. But when you continue to lose, you're blowing games like that, ultimately there does come a point where I think coaches – just kind of get to the point where you have to make a move and and it's not always that somebody else can do a lot more with it it's just that sometimes you need to make a change yeah, dan miller joining us from fox 2 and the voice of the lions uh taking it back to the lions you made a comment earlier about how dan campbell still kind of got steam coming out of his ears from that loss in your discussions with him all throughout the season have you seen him like that a couple days removed from a loss or does he normally just get past it and move on or is this one really sticking with him yeah i think I, I look he's he's an emotional guy and i've seen him angry before this one just kind of was interesting to me because normally i get him the day after this was two days after and you could just tell that he was still really gritting his teeth so i look i think it's it is embarrassing to give up that much yardage to a football team and a head coach is going to feel that and all those players are going to feel that. And that better stick with you, and it should stick with you. So, um, yeah, I've seen him carry losses before. I've seen him carry anger before. But this one, as I said, kind of struck me just because of the length of time that it, that it, you know, passed before we got a chance to talk to him. But, look, it's, uh, there, there just wasn't anything that you want to hang your hat on coming out of that game that you can say they were prepared to do or, or – ready for or anything it's just not normal to give up 320 yards rushing it's not normal to give up seven carries of 20 yards or more it's just all the things that we thought that they were able to do on this day they didn't but again i will say not making excuses there are days like that in the nfl you just hope your team's not going to have one Hey, Dan, the next time we talk to you, uh, <laughs> this team will have played a football game. <laughs> what do you think is going to happen this week, big guy? What do you think is going to happen on New Year's Day? And how would you classify this season if, in fact, they lose to TCU? Um, man, I, here's what I'll say, Ryan. I, I, do, I do think it is always interesting when you see a team leave their conference and play somebody else, because you kind of get that barometer of where they're at playing against the teams we see them play against all the time. I'm not, I'm not sure what TCU is going to look like against Michigan, to be honest with you. And I'm not sure what Michigan, and that to me is how good is TCU? Got a legit quarterback, got a great wide receiver. They've got weapons. So, I mean, I would still classify it as a very good season, I would classify it as probably disappointing if you go in as a seven and a half point favorite and you don't win. But again, I, I'm intrigued to see 
this is this is a step up, you know, for TCU being a seven and a half point underdog in a playoff game to show that, hey, you guys aren't respecting us. You're not respecting our resume and don't think they're not using that. So I, I'm really interested to see how this thing goes. Um, if I had to pick, I would pick Michigan. But look, I mean, they are missing one of their best players. Let's see how that impacts them. Um, you know, Blake Corum has obviously been a great player for them and a big part of everything good that's happened to them. Is that rushing attack the same without him in this game? I know they've survived a couple times without him, but now you're talking about the playoffs and the brightest lights that you can possibly have. And there will be pressure on, on JJ to, to play well. We've seen him do it. Can he do it again in this circumstance? I think all those things bear watching because look, up until the last couple weeks of the season, People were questioning whether or not he was going to be able to have that consistent passing attack. I think those questions still have to be answered in a game like this where you're you're called to perform at the highest level. The great Dan Miller uh, taking some time out of his day to join us today. Dan, thanks for doing this, my man. Uh, happy holidays. Happy New Year to you. And uh, here's to a little bit of a Lions run here, baby. Lions at Michigan. Let's do it this weekend, huh? Let's hope we can get some wins out of everybody, guys. Amen. Fun, I, Amen. I appreciate it, fellas. You got hey, it. Happy New Year, Talk Dan. to you next week. Thanks, Dan.